I mean, let's remember here, the people we are fighting today, we funded 20 years ago. Let's deal with the ISI and the Pakistani military, and let's go recruit these Mujahideen, and let's great, let's get some to come from Saudi Arabia and other places, importing their Wahhabi brand of Islam so that we can go beat the Soviet Union. We've made the decision we're going to war with Iraq. This was on or about the 20th of September. So I came back to see him a few weeks later, and by that time we were bombing in Afghanistan. I said, are we still going to war with Iraq? And he said, oh, it's worse than that. He said, he reached over on his desk, he picked up a piece of paper, and he said, I just, he said, I just got this down from upstairs, meaning the Secretary of Defense office today, and he said, this is a memo that describes how we're going to take out seven countries in five years, starting with Iraq and then Syria, Lebanon, Libya, Somalia, Sudan, and finishing off Iran. The United States has a new policy, a strategy that recognizes that the best way to defeat the ideology that uses terror as a weapon is to spread freedom and democracy. We measure our success in the democratic revolutions that have stunned the entire world, vibrant revolutions of rose and orange and purple and tulip and cedar. The destiny of the Middle East is bound up in this global expansion of freedom. The days of thinking that this region was somehow immune to democracy are over. We must use what has been called smart power, the full range of tools at our disposal, diplomatic, economic, military, political, legal, and cultural. I've come here to Cairo to seek a new beginning between the United States and Muslims around the world one based on mutual interest and mutual respect, and one based upon the truth that America and Islam are not exclusive and need not be in competition. Instead, they overlap and share common principles, principles of justice and progress, tolerance and the dignity of all human beings. In 2012, your agency was saying, quote, the Salafists, the Muslim Brotherhood, and Al-Qaeda in Iraq are the major forces driving the insurgency in Syria. Mm -hmm. In 2012, the yeah. US was helping coordinate arms transfers to those same groups. Why did you not stop that if you're worried about the rise of, quote, unquote, yeah, Islamic I, I, extremism? I mean, I hate to say it's not my job, but that, my job was to, was to ensure that the, that the accuracy of our intelligence that was being presented was, was as good as it could be. So the administration turned a blind eye to your analysis. I don't know that if they turned a blind eye. I think it was a decision. I think it was a willful decision. A willful decision to go support an insurgency that had Salafists, Al Qaeda, well, and the Muslim Brotherhood. A willful decision to do what they're doing. It really comes down to building a coalition so that that what the Arab Muslim world sees is them rejecting ISIS, not they us already reject them. ISIL. Do you know any major Arab ally that embraces ISIL? I know major Arab allies who fund them. Yeah, but did they embrace that? They fund them because the Free Syrian Army couldn't have fight Assad. They were trying to beat Assad. I think they realized the folly of their ways. What, what my constant cry was that our biggest problem is our allies. Our allies in the region were our largest problem in Syria. The Turks were great friends, and I have a great relationship with Erdogan, which I've just spent a lot of time with. The Saudis, the Emiratis, etc. What were they doing? They were so determined to take down Assad and essentially have a proxy Sunni-Shia war, what did they do? They poured hundreds of millions of dollars and tens, thousands of tons of weapons into anyone who would fight against Assad, except that the people who were being, who were being supplied were al-Nusra and al-Qaeda and the extremist elements of jihadis coming from other parts of the world. Was what possible motive might have uh, triggered Syria to launch a chemical attack at this time in this place? Uh, you know, the Syrians are winning. And there, just before he goes in and takes it all over, apparently he decides to have a chemical attack. It just doesn't ring true. It seems extraordinary because Clearly, he would know that there's likely to be a response from the, from the Allies. Um, what, what benefit is there for his military? Um, most of the 
uh, rebel fighters, um, this disparate group of Islamists uh, 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 had withdrawn. There were a few women and children left around. What, what benefit was there militarily in doing what he did? I find that extraordinary. Whereas we know that in the past some of the Islamic groups have used chemicals and of course there would be huge benefit in them um, labeling an attack as coming from Assad because they would guess quite rightly that there'd be a response from the US as there was last time and possibly from the UK and France.